All right, recording this on my new iPhone, so we'll see how this goes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. In this video, we are gonna be talking about the upcoming PLE Bad Blood, taking place in Atlanta on October 5th. That's six Eastern, something like that. Only on Peacock. If you live in the US, you live anywhere else, don't know. PLE has only five matches on it, but all of them have a lot of pun intended bad blood on it. So let's talk about it. Before we get into the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe this. Uh, the goal is to hit 100 subscribers by the end of the year. And I'm confident that, you know, us as a community can get it done. But so please, again, like and subscribe helps me out tremendously and makes me feel better about myself. But let's get into the bad blood preview. All right, starting off, we have Nia Jax versus Bailey for the WWE Women's title. And this feud kind of started before SummerSlam, where Nia Jax won Queen of the Ring, granting her a championship match at SummerSlam against the then champion Bailey. Those two had a, honestly a really good match, in my opinion. Probably underrated to most uh, people. But Nia Jax won the title then. And uh, since then, it's been a lot about Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton, who is not only her friend, but the Money in the Bank winner. Which, if you don't know what Money in the Bank is, it guarantees her a contract match at legitimately any point over the next calendar year. So it's not like, you know, you call your shot and a match is scheduled. You can do it during a match. You can do it after a match. You can do it and catering. You can do it while they're sleeping in their house. And you literally can cash it in at any point. So Naya, Naya is like trying to keep her in line while also fighting off the rest of the women's division, which you had Bailey and Naomi uh, basically fight each other just to get a shot. Bailey won this by Bailey won this opportunity by pinning Naomi. So what I expect uh, from this match is uh, honestly a good match like the one, uh, one before. You may see Tiffany show her face with money in bank, either to help Naya out and get back in her good graces, or just to uh, say, F you Naya and cash in. Look for Naya and me to kind of be the counter to that. Good match, but I do see Naya retaining here just because I think there's more of a story to tell with her and Tiffany and the whole briefcase thing and. Plus, Bailey was champ for a while. It's giving Nia Jax to retain her title. All right, moving on to Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. Now, th since this one is a blood feud, ever since Finn cost Damian his World Heavyweight title against Gunther at SummerSlam, and they've just been trading jabs. How like, oh, Damian's like, oh, I didn't really need Judgment Day, but you know, we were fan. Finn's like, oh no, you needed us and. You uh, prove that your ego you know, costs you fame. I'll train jabs like that about who needed who, and it all comes to a head in this match. Um, this match started off hot, but I don't, I don't know. To me, it's kind of cool, and it's taking a backseat to an upcoming match on the card. And given that there's no stipulation, even though these people hate each other, I do think this is a uh, this is not a feud ender. That are just beginning and to and with that in mind i need to look we need to look at who needs to win more to keep the view going if finn wins he gets credibility judgment day get more credibility and damien is still in pursuit to finally get that revenge if damien wins then you know finn and the rest of the, uh, judgment needs to come back harder and beat him down i do think there's more juice for the feud and a Finn win. Also, Finn just needs a damn win. Uh, I know he's a tag champion, but other than that, he really hasn't won singles action too, too much, especially not in meaningful spots. Give me fit, ma'am, I'm kind of torn. I can see them giving Damien the win and still continuing this, but I really think Finn needs to win more. So we'll, we'll, I'll go with Finn. I think Finn wins with the help of Judgment Day. Finn wins and this feud, like I said, this is not an ender. If it was, there would be a stipulation. There's no ender. Finn wins with the help of Judgment Day and they continue this after Bad Blood. We have Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley for the wor Women's World Championship. I think I'm saying it right. And not only that, you, everyone's uh, favorite dirt bag, Dom Mysterio, will be locked inside of a shark cage for the match. Now, I don't know if they're going to do it like on the stage because at, uh, on the previous Raw as a recording of this, they had the, the shark cage on stage. I don't know if they're going to do it on stage or like they did with Jer uh, Jericho 
seven years ago at this point, six years, something like that. Jer Chris Jericho was in a shark cage locked above the ring. Above the ring would be uh, funny, but I do think it's probably going to be on stage just because of uh, other matches going on in the card. It'll be kind of hard to uh, hold up two cages. But e either still, he's going to be locked away. And this feud started out when, really, it's been going on for years when Rhea injured Liv years ago. So ago, Liv came back, took out Rhea, you know, cost her time, uh, cost her uh, time with injury then took her title and then while Rio was trying to get the title back at SummerSlam took her man with Dom aligning himself with Liv Morgan and this has all about Rhea getting her revenge and getting her title back and this this is the few that has taken over any sort of Judgment Day interference and has made like Damien uh, Priest Finn Balor feud kind of feel like the second feud in this which is not bad because this is a long standing feud between the top two women on Raw fighting over the most hated person on Raw. And so this is similar to the Priest fan thing. If this is a feud ender, it, uh, it's going to be Rhea, but if they're going to continue this, then I do think Liv retains. And given how things are going and all that stuff, I'm leaning towards Liv retaining here only because I see all the stuff with Judgment Day and the Terror Twins and all that stuff continuing. It won't be Dom helping Liv, because I don't think it's a clean finish either. It won't be Dom. I do see someone else helping out, potentially a returning Raquel Rodriguez. If you don't know who uh, Raquel is, it's a female competitor, has been out with a illness that unfortunately like makes her skin like puff up. It almost almost looks like an allergic reaction, and it apparently is very painful. And I, I legitimately feel bad for her. And it's been a while. And there's also storyline like it ties in during uh, Rhea Ripley's uh, World Championship uh, Reign of Terror. Uh, Raquel was one of the few to step up to her. And they were having beef. And Raquel was friends with Liv. I think that continues, except with Liv and Raquel both being heels to Rhea's baby face. So look for Raquel Rodriguez to uh, come in, help Liv, continue his feud, and Liv Morgan remains your world, your women's world champion. All right, we move on to a match that reportedly could be the main event, although it shouldn't be. Uh, the, your co-main events at the very least, we have Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu uh, against the unlikely team of the WWE Champion Cody Rhodes and the OTC Original Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. Now, the quick backstory on this: Roman and Cody were engaged in were engaged in a year-long feud that encapsulated the t uh, main events for the last two WrestleManias. 39, which Cody failed to get the title from Roman, and WrestleMania 40, which saw Cody Rhodes defeat Roman Reigns for the WWE title. After that, Roman disappeared, and Solo Sokoa stepped up as the new tribal chief of the family faction of Bloodline. And when he stepped up, he kind of did a clean sweep. He brought in his guys, the Gorillas of Destiny, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and also brought in Jago Fatu and got rid of the old, old heads. So he got rid of Jimmy Uso, he got rid of the Wiseman, Paul Heyman. And he kind of just been running rough shot on SmackDown over the summer. Eventually he called out Cody Rose, challenged him to a match at SummerSlam, which in the main event of SummerSlam, Cody and, and Solo fighting. Out comes Roman Reigns to come and lay out uh, Solo Sokoa. Basically it's like, dog, you're not Tribal Chief, I'm Tribal Chief. Basically uh, some type of shit like that. Cody wins, uh, Solo lays out Roman and challenges Cody to a steel cage at the uh, USA premiere SmackDown. Cody wins, says he's done with Bloodline and everything. Roman comes out, lays out the rest of, of, rest of the Bloodline and then Solo makes a challenge for him and Fatu for, uh, against Roman and Cody. Obviously in his mind saying, these two hate each other, they'll never work together, which prompted uh like two weeks after that a week after that a meeting at georgia tech which is in atlanta which cody rhodes uh, family made their name cody's from also roman reigns played college football at georgia tech they basically was like no f you f you 
but I guess for this match, we'll watch his others back. But what's interesting about that is not so much those two, but it's the people around them, particularly Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, who spent the last four years at war with the old bloodline Roman Reigns and Usos and all that. So for Cody, their friend to be teaming up with them has caused some friction. And I've been going back and forth on if that if that shows his face at the PLE or the SmackDown afterwards. I do think they're building this PLE up as a huge one. The fact that you got uh, Sorry Haters, the uh, theme song is GTA by Metro Boom in the future. I know some people are like, oh my goodness, this, this rap music should not be in my wrestling. Rah, 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 rah. Stop, just stop. But uh, they're building up as like a huge deal. So look for Kevin Owens and Randy Orton to make a appearance. Probably when the uh, Tama Tonga Tonga Loa showed her face to get advantage to Solo, those two come out. I do think that they play ball enough for Cody Rose and Roman Reigns to get the win. So I'm, I'm predicting Roman Reigns and Cody to win this match. But I am also predicting that either Kevin Owens or Randy Orton lays out Cody after the bell. That's gonna be like a little, little, little twist ending to the whole ordeal. But yeah, Roman Reigns and Cody are winning this match. Roman's not losing his uh, his first match back since WrestleMania. And now we get to what I think should be the main event of the evening. We have CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre inside Hell in a Cell. And this feud has arg arguably been the most heated feud of the year. It's between this and Hangman at a page to Swerve Strickland and AEW. You can see either one and I'll agree with you. Punk and Drew have been you know, at each other basically, basically since Punk came back to WWE last year at War Games. They traded uh, jabs and then Drew shoot injured, which a shoot uh, and a work in pro wrestling is. A work is when they present something that's actually not true as for the storyline. And shoot is when something happens that's actually like, like real. Like if two people were like, oh, I hate you, I hate you, but it's a work. They actually don't hate each other, it's storyline. If they say, you know, shoot, I hate you, that means, you know, after storyline, you know, we got beef in real life. So, but yeah, uh, Drew shoot injured Punk in a War Rumble last year, putting uh, Punk on a shelf. And then Drew took the time from basically then to WrestleMania to, you know, sell merch uh, about him injured, uh, him taking out Punk, talking it up, talking it up, uh, uh, being an asshole to Punk about it. And then which led, uh, on during which he's also building up his world title match against Seth Rollins. And at WrestleMania 40, Drew beat Seth for the title and then got in Punk's face who was doing commentary uh, during it at the match. This led Punk to taking out Drew which led to Damian Priest, who was a money at bank at the time, cashing in and winning the World Heavyweight title, ending Drew's reign at like, I think it was like five minutes, 46 seconds, something like that around there. And then the whole summer, those two were trading uh, verbal jabs, beat each other up. Punk cost Drew the world title over summer num numerous times. And when Punk was finally cleared to wrestle, they met in a match at SummerSlam Special guest refereed by Rollins. Drew won that one. They had a rematch at the next PLE, which is a PLE is basically pay-per-view, but you know they don't pay per paper. They don't pay per show anymore. You pay for scriptures. They can't recall that. Anyway, they met at the next one, Bash in Berlin, which took place in Berlin, Germany, in a strap match. Punk won that. Afterwards, Punk, you know, tried to move on. Oh, I'm gonna go after the world title. Hell, hell by Gunther, la, la, la. Drew's like, nah, we ain't done. They're still beefing, and it caused it to be the f uh, third and presumably final match held inside Hell in a Cell, which is basically, you, if you see a steel cage match, the ring itself only is encapsulated by a cage. Hell in a Cell is the ring and the outside area, like the walk area, by a cage with a roof on its head. So it's like the, it's the evolved version of a cage match. And this, these matches are reserved for like blood feuds, feud enders, because they're typically blood, there's typically like flesh tearing, all that kind of stuff. So it's a perfect environment for these two. And I do see blood, I do see uh, flesh tearing, I do see all that going on. And really, in my opinion, whoever wins this should move on to the world heavyweight title scene. 
and whoever loses this probably should take a little time off get ready for war rumble in january and it's all about who's the bigger money feud heading into war games and crown jewel which is like a bigger time in WWE's calendar right now the bigger match is punk versus gunther so for that i do see punk and drew taking each other out blooding each other up neither one's going to leave the same way they walked in but only one can stand victorious and that will be cm punk cm punk wins a match wins a feud and moves on with his life drew I, I, and i think drew takes some time off I mean, he's been a workhorse over the summer for his company so yeah punk wins all right and as far as what i think will be match at night it's gotta be punk drew right you know the blood feud the uh, blood i'll be in it the sweat the tears all that build up to it and they're going to just go out there and throw on a show an absolute show and who I think will be the MVP of the night, have the best showing. I think it'll be Jacob Fatu. He has shown that he can go in the ring and he's gonna, you know, jump around, jump around. He's gonna uh, jump around that match. He's gonna give Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes hell. And I do think he comes out of bad blood looking the best. That's gonna do it for this uh, preview. Let me know in the comments, did I get, uh, do you think someone else is gonna win? Who do you have as an MVP tonight? Who, who do you think is gonna be match at night? Let me know in the comments, I love to read those. Again, go ahead and like and subscribe this. If you uh, got this far, you found something uh, useful out of this. But I will catch you guys in the next video. On all socials, I am at It's Heartfelt. But right now, I'm just heartfelt. Peace.